Hey Coding Owls, welcome back to the channel. This video, we are going to focus on practical one and practical two of our practical list. And uh, as you see, the first program says that we have to write a Java program to swap two numbers without using the third one. Let's get started with it. So if you know, if you remember, we did this so from the last video, no, you know, we have set up the basics folder. This time I'm going to create one more folder. Let's call it as practical one. And under practical one, I am going to create a file. Call it as swap to numbers.java file. So I don't want to get into the package right now. So I will just get rid of it. We will, we can, we'll be able to run it. And as you know, we can simply just type main it will, it will give me the shortcut for creating the main method. After I'm done with that, consider int number one is equal to let's say 10 and int number two is equal to 20. Now, it would have been very easy if we have to do it using just uh, two numbers. Uh, or we can take a temp number and uh, quickly just use it out. But uh, how about we switch it and this time we apply some mathematical function to it. So I'll say number one is equal to number one plus number two. So this time it will convert my number to what? 10 plus 20 is 30. So, okay, number one is 30 for now. Then I say number two is equal to number one minus number two. Okay, so what does number two becomes now? Number one value was 30. Now 30 minus 20, it becomes 10. So the number were swapped. And now again, we have to give the value for number one as well. So it will become number one is equal to, I use the same logic, number one, which the current value is what 30 minus the new value of number two, which is what 10. It will give me 30 minus 10 is uh, how much? It is 20. So both the numbers got swapped. So this time, you can see the numbers are swapped. I can simply just put up a system dot out. System dot out of print ln. We call number one uh, before. So this is these are all my before values. So I'll say number one is number one plus just a separate value of number two is plus number two. And this is all before swap. So again, I'll just put up anything here. It is before swap. And I'll copy paste these two things. Paste it out here. And I'll say that after swap, you know how to execute this. There are multiple ways. I'm just executing it from, okay, let's uh, go to terminal and uh, I'll switch to practical one. So Java C swap to numbers. And then I say Java swap to numbers. Remember you need to take out this dot class and you can also take this out and you say before swap it was 10 20 after swap n1 became 20 n2 became 10 so this is our practical 1.1 1 .1. to the second practical which says uh, write a java program to determine the reverse of a number so reverse of a number uh what it do let's start with that so I'll start a new Java file. Let's call it as reverse number dot Java. So before we jump into this, let's first uh, finalize what we want to do here. So I'll say I have number one, two, three, four, five. I want to reverse it to five, four, three, two, one. And that to using like not using string, but mathematical calculation. Again, so let's begin. Let's say my original number and number is one, two, three, four, five. See, there are two things. If like the log, two important factors which we'll be using here. First, that if you want to find out the, if you want to get the last digit. So I'll say int digit is equal to number mod 10. Okay, it will give me the five. And if I want to get rid of that last digit, I will say int digit or sorry, number without last digit. is what number divide by 10. So these are the two important factors which we will be using across 
in this uh, logic. So <clears throat> what I do, I take a blank object. I'll say reverse reversed number is equal to let's say zero. Then I create a while loop while number is not equal to zero. So I'm going to obviously cut down on the last digit. So number has to be zero. First, I take up this logic. I want to find out what was the last digit. So I cut it off from here, paste it here, and it says digit is equal to number mod two. Then I say my reversed number is equal to reversed number multiplied by 10 plus digit. So by default, it was zero in the first iteration. So digit I got was what five. So five multiplied by 10, sorry, zero multiplied by 10 was what zero. Thus the digit was five. So reverse number was only five. Then I do what I say number is equal to number divided by 10. So it will get rid of that five. Now the remaining number is what one, two, three, four. And in the whole iteration, what will happen? One, two, three, four. Uh, when I mod it, I will get four. So here it will happen. What reverse number was already what five. So five multiplied by 10 will be 50 plus four, 54. And the number will become one, two, three, so on and so forth. So just to uh, give us the iteration value, how about I put up some system dot out print L is the individual digit I got was what digit. What was the remaining reverse number here in this iteration? So I'll just say R and uh, reversed number till this point. And what was the last remaining number? So here I say system dot out dot print L and number plus my number and what I'm doing just to create a U properly, I will say system or print and and I just put up a blank line. So this way, what will happen now? I'll open my terminal again and I'll see Java C reverse number dot Java and Java space reverse number C. So the reverse digit is what five four three two one. And in the first iteration, I got five reverse was five, then five, four, then five, four, three, five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, one. It's a very simple way to actually achieve this. Uh, you can find the link to this code in the description box. Yeah. I think this would be a good time for you to go and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it till now. And uh, let's move on to the third one now. Practical in this list is what? Write a Java class to print the Fibonacci series till 100. Now, what exactly is a Fibonacci series? Let us have a look at that. In Fibonacci series, what happens? You have 0 and 1 as a default value. Addition of, so this is the first number, this is the second number. Now, addition of this two number will actually generate the third one. So, what is the next number here? 0 plus 1 is 1. Now, 1, so this will become the first number. Now, this will be the next generated number will become the second number. So, 1 plus 1 is what? 2. Same way, 1 plus 2 becomes 3. 2 plus 3 becomes 5. 3 plus 5 becomes 8. 5 plus 8 become 13 and so on. So this is how the series will go on till 100. So we are going to write a code for that. Let's jump into that. And so I'll start writing my code. Let's call it as Fibonacci series. Dot Java file. Again, I don't want this package. We'll talk about package when we reach the package practices. I had my main method under my main method simply just let's say int n1 and n2 n1 is equal to 0 and n2 is equal to 1 okay so i have number 1 number 2 and the addition of these two numbers will generate the next number for me and i will just say while true the here i say int number 3 is equal to 0 initially and number 3 is equal to n1 plus n2 because as i said the next number is nothing but the addition of number one and number two so let me call it as next only rather than writing it n3 i'll call this is next so next is equal to n1 plus n2 so what will be the series it will print now as we want to check whether the series is only till 100 i will say if my next number is greater than 100 then I want to break this loop and I want to come out. 
printing actually needs to start from top so here i will simply say what system dot out dot print rather than saying print ln i will just say print i'll say fibonacci series from okay starts from what uh, i have got n1 plus comma separated plus n2 and after this i just want to continue in that series so i will again say system dot out dot print not ln just print and i have to comma put up a comma so that it will continue in the previous one and i will say next we'll keep on printing till the point it reaches 100 and then it will lock so let us see how it on the terminal how it works out here my screen java fibonacci series java space fibonacci series and okay i have made some mistake somewhere something yeah i i have got my mistake the problem is i didn't update my n1 and n2 after uh, this scenario so after i print this next value i will simply say now what will happen your n1 will become n2 and n2 will become the next value that is important so we missed on that compile it again execute and you can see 0 1 1 1 2 1 plus 2 is 3 2 plus 3 is 5 3 plus 5 is 8 8 plus 13 is 21 13 plus 21 is 34 and so on so this time it was reaching outside 100 so it blocked this is how you print the fibonacci series and now let's jump on to the fourth one to see the fourth practical in this list is about whether the number is an armstrong number or not now what exactly does an armstrong number mean let's see that so armstrong number basically is that number where for example 153 is considered to be an armstrong number now 153 are three digits okay now if i take each element if i take each element and create a cube of it because the, there are three digits i will say cube so one cube plus individual numbers cube why three why we are taking a cube because this is three digit number so when the individual element numbers its cube addition is equal to the same number itself for example 1 cube is 1 5 cube is 125 and 3 cube is 27 if it equals to the original number that is what we call as an armstrong number simple to understand that let's code it how will we do that so for this i will uh, create a new file let's call it as an armstrong number dot java file now in an armstrong number Okay, we'll get rid of this I mean I'll take three values in original number remainder value and I will take a result value and I will assign all these three to zero okay then let me say my original number is 153 you can keep on changing changing this number to check the values of correct or not now what i do next is i simply create a loop so while original number is not equals to 0 because i'll be getting rid of those numbers step by step and uh, I do what I create a remainder first. So remainder is equal to original number mod 10. Yeah, original number of mod of 10. After I get the remainder, I want to calculate the result. Simplest way to calculate the result is what result is equal to result plus, and then because we are going to take a cube, I'll say remainder multiplied by remainder multiplied by the remainder. Okay, and uh, then result is calculated i can trim off my original number to be original number divide by 10 so it will keep on uh, going down this number and after i am done with this if my result and you know what i should have taken the copy of my original number somewhere so i can simply here say int 
number is equal to original number because original number will become zero uh, by by the time this calculation is happening and i can say if my result is equal to number then this is an um, strong number else not an um, strong number it. and let's try this out java c um, strong see it exceeded the uh, calculated it without compilation it did it and if i change this to 154 now and i say run from here okay mm, i'll run this again from here itself not an armstrong number why because i changed the number so this is how you write an armstrong number last practical in uh, series one is we determine whether the number is prime or not now how do we determine whether the number is prime or not so prime number is any number which is basically greater than one and that has no positive divisor other than one and itself so those numbers which are divisible by themselves and one only themselves and one are considered to be prime number for example seven is divisible by one it is not whole divisible by two three four five six and next number it is seven so let's it's a very simple one let's code it out quickly so i'll start with the file let's call it as prime number dot java file and okay let's say my main method first so in my main i will say my int number is equal to 7 and so first what i will check and i will say a boolean flag is prime and i keep it to true let's say first i will check if my number is less than 2 I will simply say my is prime is false we don't check for those numbers else what we do is uh, we start with for loop we say for int index is equal to 2 we'll start with 2 we'll say index is less than equal to the number and we have got index plus plus Okay, and what I do next is I will see if my number mod the current index value if it becomes zero that means it is divisible I don't want that I will simply say is prime is false and I will break this loop okay and let's keep this value to false from initial and uh, yeah so here I will say else is prime is true so if it goes into the else block continuously it will give me the value out so this is my after it completes the else block if it is working fine I guess we don't need this else block if we switch back to our previous logic that by default the prime number is true so after this else block i will simply just check if is prime system dot out dot print ln number is a prime number and then is not a prime number and let me start the this is our space prime number oh it says 7 is not a prime number that should not be true 
so you saw it was giving me that 7 is not a prime number a reason was i forgotten that this should be i should only check between 3 and 6 not 7 mod 7 will be 0 right so it will be perfect so this was a small mistake and this is how you check for your prime numbers in java so yeah so this brings to the end of the practical one thank you for watching this video please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet